So it's time to work on our front design of our decorations. So I've got my back piece of um, felt with my snowflake embroidery on it. I'm going to pop that to one side because I don't need it for this part. And I am going to use my other piece of blue felt. Now, you might notice some pen marks on your felt, which I used when we were cutting out. If you have got any ink on your... Um, on your piece of felt what you can do is they are uh, it's in friction pen so if you just pop your piece of felt on the radiator for a minute or two then the ink should disappear or if it's just on one side like I've got here I'm just going to make sure that that side is face down but if I wanted if I wanted it the other way around I'd just pop it on the radiator for a minute and it should go if you just give it a rub on the radiator that should remove the ink. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay out my design. So my dark brown buttons are for my Inuit. I'm having my Inuit on the um, left hand side. And the light buttons are for my pug. So I'm thinking about where I want to put these buttons. Now I've got to be mindful that I haven't got a lot of room for this design on my um, felt circle and I've got to leave room for my joining stitch for joining the two pieces together so whether that's blanket stitch or if you're using back stitch or running stitch. Um, we are going to make these look a little bit more like um, Inuits and uh, pugs by adding some stitch details but also possibly by putting a little sticker over the top of this button once it's sewn on to draw on a face. Right I'm going to move my buttons off now that I know roughly where things are going I'm happy with my snow being this way round. Um, so my first stage is to join the snow to my um, back piece of felt. So I'm going to use just a simple running stitch to do this. I'm going to start in one of my corners. I've got my knot in the end of my thread and I've got my needle threaded. And I'm not going to go very close to the edge. But I'm going to do just a simple running stitch. I'm getting caught up on my scissors over here. Now I've made a bit of a mistake here because I've got quite a lot of thread on my uh, needle and I'm risking getting tangled up so I'm just going to pull the tail a bit longer so I've got less to move through. I'm not pulling tight because I want this piece of snow to lay nice and flat. And I'm doing fairly large stitches because this is not the most important part of my design and actually it's not going to show up very clearly. I could do smaller stitches on the outside and longer stitches on the back so I'm leaving a longer gap here because this is purely to secure our snow onto the front. It's also going to be held down with the buttons as well so it's not the most important job that we are doing. So after I've finished sewing on the snow, my next job is going to be um, placing the buttons. Oops. So I'm going to show you in a moment how to tie off again, just to recap, but I'm sure you are all experts by now. And we've got to be careful because we're using just a running stitch on this piece. Uh, the running stitch is one that if you pull on it, it does pucker up very easily. Don't worry if there's flappy bits at the edges because that will be held down with our, run with our blanket stitch at the end. Okay, so I'm going to turn over my work onto the wrong side and I'm going to anchor it onto this stitch here. So I'm going to put my needle underneath. I've got to be really careful not to pull too hard. So I've done it so it's just at the right sort of um, tension between there. Then I'm going to come round again without pulling too tight. I'm going to put my needle through the little loop that I've made 
and I'm keeping my finger on that stitch so that when I pull it tight, I'm not going to pull the stitch out of place. Okay, that should be tight enough. If I'm not sure, I'm just gonna put my needle under the stitch one more time, go through the loop, finger on the stitch, and just pull it tight. Then I can just snip that part there. Okay, so now my snow is secure on the front of my decoration. Okay. So I'm going to be adding, um, I'm going to be adding some detail onto um, the front now. I'm going to start with my Inuit character. Now I'm going to stay using my white thread for this because I think it will be quite a nice contrast on my Inuit. And when we do that lovely cross on the button, um, it, will, it will look like it's the fastening of our Inuit jacket. So if I wanted them to match and not see the stitches, I'd use a thread of the same color. But I think on this occasion, actually, the contrast is going to look quite effective. OK, so I'm going to start with the bigger button. I know that I want it about here. So what I could do, again, just using my handwriting pen, just put a little dot roughly where I think the middle of the button is going to go. And I'm going to bring my needle out to the bottom left hand corner. So again, it might be handy to write that one, two, three, four up on the board, like we did when we were doing our button on our sampler piece. If I just find my piece of paper that has it. There it is. So writing this up onto the board again, so we know that we're going from bottom left to top right, and then, uh, top left to bottom right. So once my needle's halfway through, I'm going to put the button over the top. Check, now's your time to check whether it's in the right position. So yeah, I'm not too close to the edge, that's about as close as I can get. I'm gonna line my button up, I'm pinching it from behind and from the front, and I'm going to bring my thread through. Okay, until it's nice and tight. Still pinching my button. I'm going to go into that top right hand corner. And remember, you can pull nice and tight on this because the wood on the button is going to make sure it's not puckering your fabric up. So I'm going to come out into my top left. Again, if you get it in the wrong order, it really doesn't matter. And then down careful not to stab your fingers into that last hole. So as you can see, it's quite nice. Oh, it's jumping around all over the place. It's quite nice to have that contrast on the front there. So I'm going to go around one more time, starting in my bottom left hand corner, up to the top right. And because I'm adding another button, I'm not going to tie off after this one. The fewer knots that we do, the better, because they are quite fiddly to do. Okay. So this time I need to make sure that I'm going to get my top button in the right place. So what I can do is just have a little look. If I wanted to be really precise, I could measure where the middle of the button is and put a dot. I'm just going to have a rough guess. I know that it's going to be about there. So I'm just gonna, oops, where it says about there. I'm just gonna do a little dot on my work. Put my needle through in that bottom left corner and thread my button on. So once I've pulled my thread through, I'm just checking that they are meeting, that they touch each other. If not, I might pull my thread back out and, um, and reposition it, but I'm quite happy with where that is. So I'm going to pinch that 
from behind and from the front. And I'm going to go into my top right. Can be a bit fiddly. Okay, I've got a little bit of a gap there, but I can just push my button down for my next stitch to make sure that it's exactly where I want it to be. So I'm going to come through in my top left hand corner. And then what I'm doing is I'm pushing the button down to where I want it to be, bringing my thread through and I'm pretty happy with that. And once more, I'm just going to go over these pieces here. So you can pause the video once I've got to this step. I'm just going to show you, well, pause the video now while you put your buttons on and you can um, start it up again and I will show you how to fasten off. Okay, so to fasten off, looking at the wrong side of my work, and I'm actually going to anchor my stitch to one of these small ones here. So I'm just gonna put my needle under, make my loop, pull it tight, and then go through one more time. So we've just got that knot at the beginning, of our buttons and one at the end. You can see where I've gone onto the second button from the back here, but that's nice and tight. My buttons are nice and secure and my decoration still sits nice and flat. So I can snip this thread off. Now on my bobbin, I've got some of this tan colored um, thread, which matches the buttons that I've got for the pug. So I'm actually, for this one, <clears throat> I haven't ever seen a pug with a white cross on their back, so I'm going to use the tan thread because I want it to match. So I'm going to unwind the thread from my bobbin. I don't need too long a piece. Tie my knot. Remember three or four knots at the end because we're doing buttons. I wonder if you can remember why I recommend doing three or four knots at the end when we're doing something like a button or a joining stitch. That looks big enough. I'm just going to chop a little bit off the end there for neatness. And find my needle thread my white thread and a little recap you might find that your thread has got a bit of a frayed end you can um, that's going to make it difficult to go through the needle so what you can either do is you can just snip the end off or you can just lick the end of the thread and that will keep all of the fibers together so remember I'm just pulling down the thread really close to my thumbs there and I'm going to pop the needle over the top of the thread there we go okay so now to position my button so I don't want them one on top of the other because my pug's not standing upright I'm going to have it like this because what I'm going to do find a piece of paper is that when I've put my um, sewn my pug buttons on, I'm going to be adding some little stitches for legs and a tail, okay? And also maybe some little ears. And they look a little bit cat-like. I'm gonna have to make sure that they're very small stitches so they look more like dog ears. So one button to the left of the other. This is the body, this is the head. I'm going to start with the body and I'm thinking about, I'm going to place both of my buttons onto my um, felt. Now I know that I want to do a little tail and I want to do some legs. So my pug is going to be very close to my Inuit. Okay, so we've got Shen or Sika here, whoever you want it to be. 
um, and the pug is going to be there. So I'm going to put a dot onto my work where I think the middle of the button is going to go. Or what you can do, oh actually I wouldn't recommend putting your um, pen through the buttonholes just in case you mark these buttons. So ignore that. So I'm going to lift that off, just put a dot where I think, yep, that's where I want it to go. Move that button to the side, make sure we're not losing those buttons. And now I can get my tan coloured thread and bring my thread in to the bottom left hand corner of the dot that I have there. Bring it halfway through and take the bigger of the two buttons, bottom left corner, pinching it from behind and from the front. And then going to the top right hand corner, pulling it nice and tight. This is your time to check your position. If you've got it wrong now, all I would recommend doing is unthreading your needle, pulling the button off and repositioning it. But I'm quite happy with where mine is. So pinching it still, find, oh, it's taken me a little while to see where to put the needle through but sometimes if I look at the back that will guide me and again we're not going to join we're not going to fasten off at the end of this button we're going to sew the other one directly on as well so while I've got my needle threaded in this part I'm actually going to sew my legs on now not my legs the pug's legs so just do that last bit on there so what I want you to do is make two little legs here and two little legs here and I'm just going to do that using um, well essentially I'm using a little back stitch to do that so not pulling too tight, otherwise the fabric will pucker up. And I'm going to come to, I'm going to poke my needle just under the button because then I won't see any gaps between my stitch and the top and the edge of the button. Okay, so it's just a tiny little leg there, but it's enough when you're looking up close for some detail. Now what I might do actually is go back to the beginning of that stitch Bring my needle up and go and do another one exactly in the same space and this means I've just got two layers there makes it a little bit thicker and means that I'm going to see it a bit better then I'm going to do my other one which I think will be about here putting my needle just underneath the button so I don't see the edge Coming out in the same place where my stitch started. And then back in again. So I've got the front two legs. I'm going to do my back two legs. It doesn't matter if you go over one of your running stitches here because they're fairly invisible in terms of being the same colour as the white. So now I've got a three-legged pug. Doing my two stitches around. I'm going to do my other leg. I'm just thinking, so there are my front two legs. I'm actually going to put the other leg just in between the front leg and the other back leg. So I can keep them nice and close to each other. And you can see I've gone over one of my running stitches there. It really doesn't matter. In fact, it will make the leg stitches stand out that bit more. And while I'm doing these little stitches, I could add my tail. Now, Pug's got very short little tails. So I'm not going to make it too big. And again, I'm just going to do two stitches
two stitches at the end there. So now I've got my pug's body, four legs and a tail. So it's time to put the head button on. So I'm thinking about where that's going to go. I could, because this is a very small little button, I could just place it on my decoration and just try and get my needle through straight away, but that can be a bit fiddly. Now, something I've discovered as we're making these, when the buttons arrived, the holes in the middle were a bit smaller than I thought. So if I try to put my needle through here, it's getting stuck. So I'm actually going to have to swap to a smaller needle just for this button. I should have been organised and got them ready before, but I haven't. So have a look in my sewing drawer. Okay, so I've got a smaller needle which are trickier to thread, but we're experts at this now, so it should be okay. Although the needle I found is ridiculously small. That's no use, Miss Bartlett, right. I'm just going to pause the video while I find a needle that is going to work. 